most effective movements and how to avoid them. Number six, destruction. Just a quick recap. This comes from the Bleach anime during the Espada saga. And this aspect of death comes from Espada number six, Grimjow Yigayakwes. Now, destruction is defined as the action or process of causing so much damage to something that it no longer exists or can, or can be repaired. And I kind of look at destruction as the midpoint in between all of these aspects of death. So first I talked about rage, talked about madness, talked about greed, and talked about in in intoxication slash hedonism. And destruction is a practical act. It's making a conscious choice to remove remove something, remove something from its truest form, alter something to the point where it's no longer visible, no longer comprehensible, no longer usable. Destruction can come from rage. It can be the, the end result of rage. Like I brought up Kratos, a god of war. And when you know you hit, I said you hit L3 and R3, the rage meter turns to fire. And Kratos' only mindset is just destroying everything and anything in his path. When it comes to greed, the, the things we consume lead to destruction. You know, I talked about alcohol, uh, destroyed brain cells. You can think about processed food, fast food, food full of preservatives. That's slowly destroying your body, your organs. When you think about madness, insanity is rooted in the brain. And you're destroying brain cells. You're, you're destroying how you process, how you function, how you maneuver, how you... If you get to the point where you're too far deep into the madness, right? You destroy your ability to break free. You destroy your ability to have willpower. You destroy your ability to free yourself. And when it comes to intoxication and hedonism, kind of the same thing as greed. You destroy your ability to function, right? That's what addictions are, right? They remove your ability. Or they destroy your ability, to function in society, they destroy your ability to have relation, healthy relationships, they destroy your ability to go to work and just be responsible for yourself and your life choices. So destruction is all around us. And again, what makes it different compared to the other aspects of death is that it is a conscious choice. There isn't, there can be, there's always, there's always the, the argument of ignorance of not knowing but there is collective understanding and collective awareness of what isn't beneficial to our health. What isn't beneficial to your health? What isn't beneficial to your life purpose, your life goals, and the things you want to accomplish for yourself? And the more you dishonor, I always talk about honoring self, the more you dishonor what you want and who you want to be, the more you destroy who you innately are and who you innately want to be. The choices you make, I've said, don't make you better than other people, but the choices you make inhibit and limit your ability to be a better version of yourself, a better member of whatever social groups you're in, and they limit your, they, they allow you to limit your responsibility in society. So on the surface, you know, I feel like destruction is pretty straightforward in terms of just making poor choices. So I really just want to focus on how to avoid destruction. And every aspect of life is destruction. The things we eat, the things we drink, everything is recycled in some way or another. But our responsibility and your responsibility, all of our collective individual responsibilities is to create. And that's the balance. We, we're aware that the, I'm aware that all these materials, the shirt, hat, dresser, it came from reformatting some type of matter, some type of material. And through that, I'm allowed to. I'm allowed. We're, we're all allowed to utilize the things that we have and own. But the end result, going back to greed and overconsumption in our in our society, is the destruction of rainforests, the destruction of natural habitats, the destruction of homes for animals. Um, look at diamond, blood diamonds, the destruction of uh, natural resources, the destruction of the Gulf of Mexico, you know, from oil spills. I desire to consume. I desire to fulfill these base urges of base needs to lead to the destruction of the planet. And destruction of the planet inevitably leads to the destruction of 
our species because it becomes uninhabitable. You look at the hurricanes that are increasing, the death tolls that are increasing from hurricanes, from the drought out west, the fires out west, um, fires in Siberia, the ice caps melting in Antarctica, sea levels rising. So all, all of these are a result, all of these forms of destruction on the planet are a result of our, of the of human, rather, of human greed and human consumption. And the collective inability to step out of what we're preconditioned and pre-programmed to do and to create. Earth's population is about 7.8 or 7.4 billion right now. And my general belief is that if we, if enough people, if enough people had the freedom to tap into their passions, if enough people put in the effort to tap into their passions, if enough people, I guess, again, I say bro- broke free from the social restraints that we're all kind of conditioned to live, live in, we wouldn't have the issues we're having on a global scale, socially, environmentally, economically, um, politically. We all have our innate cares. We all have ideologies and views and platforms and positions that are passion that are passions that are important to us. We understand the the need to expand our own experiences, expand the minds of people who only see things in a limited perspective. And our responsibility is to champion these groups, these platforms, these ideologies, and these views that we have, but health, healthy, in a healthy way, rather. Well, we don't, because most of our life experience is just following the, the perspective, the ruling, the guise, the, the ordinances, ordinances of people in high power, people um, who entertain us, people who make us laugh, people who make us cry people who are supposed to rep- or supposed to represent us and so much of a, our life experience ends up being stuck in greed in terms of just consuming consuming content consuming information and the more we consume from, uh, from other people the more we create a situation where we allow them to fulfill their dreams we allow them to push their agendas and their beliefs but the millions of us who support them who buy the albums who follow them on social media platforms we're not living our dreams. We're not doing what we want to do for ourselves. Art is meant to inspire. It's not meant to be consumed. Art is meant to inspire. It's meant, it's meant to fill you with passion and bring an awareness to issues that not only do these celebrities or high figures care about, but it's also meant to inspire you to find your own platform, create your own platform, and find the the issues, the um, the issues that matter to you, the the, the changes and the, the uh, growth and effort you want to put in during your time, in the, as I say, in this one one in like once in a lifetime life experience. But the distraction, the greed, and the, all of these causes of death are a result of the social, political, economical, familial um, pressures that we all pressures and oppression that we all kind of go through. Your responsibility is to create. And social media has made it easier than ever to create, to connect with people who share similar values and views as as you. Um, Create networks, create groups, create a community. Initially, community was on a very local level, but the internet allowed, allowed us to expand and connect with anyone and everyone on the globe. I think about four, four, million, four billion people have like smartphones or have access to internet in, in the world. So there's unlimited potential to create. There's unlimited potential to commune. There's an unlimited potential to heal. I think. That, I mean, I think that's part of it, right? The, the, the other aspect that needs to balance out the destruction is the creating in order to heal, in order to bring reform in order to bring change. In a previous um, aspect of death, I talked about the NPR article where they said that, or they explained that you know, pol- recycling isn't isn't real, right? It was in, created by oil corporations 
to make it make us feel good about ourselves on the the uh, everyday common folk level and the recurring issue and all of our social issues that lead to the destruction of our social lives and of the planet and every other aspect of our life is no one does anything because no one creates no one's making the effort not enough people rather enough people aren't creating enough people aren't making the effort to join their voices together spread information spread information and make more people aware of what's wrong we're quick to just lose focus we, you know i think recently thinking about cancel culture and cancel culture is a form of dist- of, a dist- of destruction um and mostly thinking about Nicki Minaj and just her tweet about a friend of a friend's experience and people just trying to destroy her and t- take away her, her position of power and influence because they believe she's spreading misinformation. And that's where we are socially right now, where people don't, don't agree with us. And our only response is just to destroy their name, destroy their, their brand and take away from anything that, that would allow them to share information that doesn't reflect what we already believe. The Pulse Podcast is brought to you by the Black Excellence Shop. Shop our Black Excellence Calendar and Journal Bundle. 366 days of creativity, motivation, and spirituality. And shop our Black Excellence Daily app for Android and iOS. BlackExcellenceDaily.com So your responsibility is to create. Create art. Create content. Share your perspective, share your insight, connect with other people who have similar perspectives as you commune and make other people aware. I can't support something I'm not aware of. I can't support change or growth in issues that I'm not aware of. No one is omniscient, no one is omnipotent, but the collective responsibility is to make as many other people aware as you are, through sharing your experiences, share, sharing your story, sharing your trauma, sharing your plight, in hopes that you can speak to the empathy and, pa- and passion in people so that they're willing to support however they can. Your fight doesn't have to be my fight, and my fight doesn't have to be your fight. But if I'm, if I'm aware of your fight, if I'm aware of what you're doing, if I'm aware of your efforts, if I'm aware of what matters to you and what you want to change, I'm going to support how I can. Other people are going to support how they can. Whether it's a donation to um, a fund, whether it's a donation to a GoFundMe page, whether it's, whether it's a... They're showing up, showing up in the street and it's rallying. People are more likely to support and be a part of change and growth if they're aware and if it speaks to them. And that's what social media does. It allows you to share who you are, share your perspective, share your, share your ideology, share, share your philosophies with people share a bit of your innate talent. And through that, people rock out with you. People vibe with you. People empathize with you and empathize with your mission. And they're more willing to support you however they can. We've transitioned into creating these networks where the sole individuals are allowed to reap the benefits. Um, which is, I mean, another form of kind of monopolizing how things are. But your responsibility, my responsibility, and all of our collective responsibilities are, is to make our own imprint and to kind of set the condition for how we want our lives to be, how we want the lives of the next generation to be, and how we want the lives of the older generation to kind of phase out. And we do that through creating. We do that through creating uh, nonprofits. We do that through creating uh, organizations. We do that through creating ways to honor and tribute people. Right. The more we're aware of the successes in the past, of the past, the more we set the condition to not repeat those mistakes, but also inspire the next generation, inspire ourselves. But when we don't honor the past. We destroy part of history. When we destroy part of history, other people reshape it and kind of create their own narrative. And we lose out. So creating is full, encompassed of past, present, and future. Creating allows you to honor the past. 
allows you to fulfill what you need for your generation and your present, but it also sets precedent so that the next generation kind of has what they need also. Um, that's all I got for this. Thanks for rocking out. Until next time, peace.